You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to take your brother. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Welcome to another broadcast of His Abound and Grace with Minister Vanessa Williams on When Christmas Speed Talk Radio. Amen. Hit message tonight. Tonight is launched out into the deep. We're excited to hear from this woman of God. She always has a great word. Amen. And I'm um, excited. So get, go get somebody. Let them know that we're broadcasting live. This is a live broadcast right now. Amen. Um, the telephone number is 646-478-0660. 646-478-0660. Amen. You can also find us on the social media site and also on the website. Amen. Uh, we do want to have a couple of quick things we want to do before we uh, start, uh, Minister Vanessa, launch out into the deep. Amen. Don't forget the Minister Vanessa Williams, amen, is on every Tuesday with His Abound and Grace at 7 p.m. Declaring the finished work with Reverend Pat Randall is Thursday at 12 noon. Uh, Friday night, Joel with Reverend Ray and Friends is at 7 p.m. Bread of Life with Reverend Ray is Sundays at 7 p.m. Challenge to Change with Pastor Paul Morgan is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Amen. Our monthly broadcast is as follows. Lifeline with Apostle Shirley Jones is every first Monday of the month at 7 p.m. The Bowl in the Beautiful with Reverend Obita Reed, Reverend Curtis Austin, and Minister Jordana Cunningham is every second Saturday at 10 a.m. Adoration with Evangelist Lewis McElwain is every third Monday of the month. Amen. At 7 p.m. But he is doing a special uh, uh, series this month. I mean, he finished just finished doing one last Monday. Amen. So uh, just just go to to the um, adoration um, um, Facebook page or come to Blog Talk Radio, and you'll see the series that he's working on. Um, doing an awesome work here. So that's every third Monday of the month. Marriage Takeover, The Body of One with Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thomas is every third Sunday at 7 p.m. And maybe we want to encourage this for all people that are married or maybe you plan on getting married. Uh, they, they have an awesome ministry there, too. Amen. Don't forget about our weekly prayer. Midday Glory Prayer with Reverend Gwen Dixon is every Wednesday at 1 p.m. This is a, a free conference call um, a thing that we do. We do it every Wednesday at 1 p.m. It's, the number is 641-715-3580. The SS code is 732-499. Amen. I'm, again, I'm excited about the word the minister Vanessa is going to bring today. Amen. And I have posted something on social media. I want everybody to um, do for me. I'm calling on all intercessors, your intercessor or a prayer warrior, to um, keep this nation, um, our government, in prayer. You know, to keep it in prayer and everything, that there'll be a return back uh, to Christ. Amen. Um, so with that being said, I like the title that she has, Launch, launch Out Into the Deep, is Minister Vanessa Williams on His Abounding Grace. Well, good evening and praise the Lord. This is Minister Van. And on to, this evening, we just want to encourage you once more just to Stand still and, and just know that God has not forgotten you. No matter what you're going through, we just want to encourage you that um, God has a message for you. Um, the title of the message this evening is Launch Out and To the Deep. Launch Out and To the Deep. Our prayer is that this message penetrates to the very depth of your soul, your soul that seeks rest, reassurance, and restoration. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, Lord. 
first of all, God, we ask you to search our hearts and our minds, and there be anything that's not pleasing to you. We ask you to forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your cleansing power, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to serve, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for your audience, Lord God, for the listening ears, Lord God, that this message would penetrate, Lord God, and this message would help someone, Lord God, to, to know, to be reassured that they can still make a difference in your kingdom. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for giving us this opportunity, Lord. We thank you for when, when Christian Speak Talk Radio, Father. And now, Lord, we ask you, Father, right now that we would decrease, that you would increase, that they don't hear us, but they hear a voice that comes from you, Father. We claim in victory in the name of Jesus. We claim in healing in the name of Jesus. We claim in restoration in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we claim in all of these. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, again, the message is launch out into the deep. When we speak of rest for your soul, we're talking about peace. For some, you may be experiencing such turmoil in your life right now. It may seem like nothing's going right. It may seem like just just so many things going wrong and you may not even know where to turn to. But I'm here to encourage you that you need to turn to Jesus. So many things to think about, so many things to do, so many unknowns. But again, I want to encourage you right now, this very moment, that it's okay. You're going to be okay. You can have rest. God wants you to rest. Colossians 3.15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And Jesus came that you might have that peace. For John 14.27 lets us know that, and this is Jesus speaking. He says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give out unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So I'm saying to you today, if your soul is seeking rest today, it's yours for the asking. So launch out into the deep. We're talking about faith here. God is with you. This is a message of rest, reassurance. So I want to reassure you that what God has for you, is for you, sister. No matter what it might seem like, no matter what it might feel like, no matter what you may have heard, my brother, be reassured that God desires the best for you, the very best for you. The word of God the word of God says that if you abide in him and let his word abide in you, you can ask whatever and it shall be done. You see, when you are abiding in the Lord, that means your will will line up with God's will. And then there is no good thing that he will withhold from you. Be assured. Be confident. Launch out into the deep. God is with you. You can do it. Jesus' desire is for restoration for you. Only he can restore what the enemy has taken. Restoration comes after you have submitted totally to God. After you have decided to rest in the Lord. You see, Romans fifteen thirteen says, Now the God of hope, and we want to talk about hope, Fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. You see, you can't do it by yourself. You cannot do it by yourself. You need the power of the Holy Ghost to sustain you. You need his power to keep you. There is rest for the weary. Cast your cares on Jesus. There is reassurance for the weary. Reassurance in God's word. What he's done before, he would do it again. There is restoration for the weary. So don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up. Launch out into the deep. Psalms 51, 12 says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Launch out into the deep means, nevertheless, regardless of whatever's going through, I'm going to believe and trust in God. In spite of what has just been happening, in spite of what's just been said, in spite of what it appears to be, in spite of everything that goes against reasoning, I'm going to launch out into the deep. As Christians, nevertheless, means regardless of the circumstances, I'm not going to be moved by what I see. I'm going to trust God. 
I may be weak in the flesh and sometimes feel like wavering, but I'm going to press on, for my strength cometh from the Lord. The cares of this world may temporarily seem to overtake me, but I will cast all of them on Jesus, for I know he cares for me. Nevertheless means I am fully persuaded that he who began a good work in me is well able to keep me. Not my will, but God's will be done. Nevertheless, I am going to launch out into the deep. We're going to go to Luke, the fifth chapter. That's Luke 5. It started with the first verse. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gesserit, another name for the Sea of Galilee, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Verse 3, as he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. You see here, Jesus had to go into the ship because the crowds were pressing against him so much so that he decided to get off the land and go into a ship. The fourth verse, so now when he had left speaking, that's when Jesus had left speaking, he says to Simon, Launch out, launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And the sixth verse, And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets break. You see, the fishermen had given up their pursuit of trying to catch some fish that night. For they had left the ships and they were actually cleaning their nets. That lets me know they had given up for the night. They said they had toured all night and hadn't caught anything. So what was the use of continuing? Perhaps there is someone that's listening to my voice right now. And you feel like you've done all you can. You feel like you've toured all night long. You feel like a mouse trapped in a mouse trap, just spinning your wheels, you literally feel like all hope is just about God. Well, I'm here to encourage you right now. I say to you right now, nevertheless, regardless of what it seems like, launch out into the deep. Go where it doesn't make sense to go. Go against all odds. Even if you feel like you've gotten to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hold on. Even if you feel like you've been weeping all night long and wondering when your morning is come, even though you may not, even, may, even though you may feel like there is nothing else to do, even though you may feel like there is no way out, or that there's no way who can truly understand or help you, even though you feel like you may be all worn out from the cares of this world, I say to you, even though you feel like the physical pain and the suffering has lasted far too long, I'm going to say to you right now, again, cling to the nevertheless. Lord, at thy will, at thy word, I will trust you. Nevertheless, at thy word, I'm going to let down the net. I'm going to launch out into the deep. Imagine, if you will, how Simon and the other fishermen must have felt torn all night long and not catching any fish. And here comes along Jesus, instructing him to launch out into the deep. Now the fact that Simon called Jesus master lets us know that he knew something about Jesus prior to this encounter. Simon had perhaps sat among Jesus as he was teaching the crowd or had perhaps witnessed miracles that Jesus had performed. Maybe he's just heard about this man who could make the crowds want more, who could make a way out of no way. Perhaps he had just heard about this man who was causing such a stir in the place. At any rate, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net, Simon says. He simply obeyed. How many know that obedience is better than sacrifice? You see, the fact that Simon didn't question Jesus, even though they were experienced fishermen and they would know where and when the fish were biting, let us, lets us know that he recognized that he was in the presence of somebody great. The fact that he called him master lets us know that he was willing 
and ready to learn something, that he didn't consider himself a know-it-all. The fact that even although he had toured all night, he immediately said, nevertheless, makes me believe that Brother Simon was expecting a breakthrough and tell me, trust me, based on the word of God, he was not disappointed. Fourth verse says, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, talking about Jesus, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered, said unto him, Master, we have toured all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught so many, so many fishes that the nets couldn't even contain it. At thy word, I will go at it again. At thy word, I won't give up. At thy word, at thy word, Lord, at thy word. Because of Simon's obedience, because of his expectation, because of his faith, he experienced a huge blessing, a great multitude of fishes, so much so that they broke the net. He obeyed. He expected. He received his blessings overflowing. Now, when you rest in the belief that the battle belongs to God, you are acknowledging that it's not your problem. When you rest in the promise and reassurance that God's word is true, forever settled in heaven, you are following God's will. When you rest in a posture of standing still and the waiting, your restoration will come. That's the nevertheless. And everything that the devil means for evil, God will turn it around for your good. Rest, reassurance, and restoration. Jesus is saying to somebody right now, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. You see, I know you were just about to give up. I know you were just about to toss in the tower. I know you were about to walk away from expecting. But just trust me, launch out into the deep. Venture out into the unknown. Don't give up because you haven't seen your breakthrough yet. Don't give up because your body is still racked with pain. Don't give up because the doctors have told you this or that. Don't give up because your bank, your money doesn't look so right right now. Don't give up because your family is not supporting you. Don't you give up. You trust in God. You launch out into the deep and you explore the unfamiliar territory. Don't allow bitterness resentment and unforgiveness to overcome you you launch out into the deep don't allow frustration disappointment and weariness to overcome you you launch out into the deep god is saying to someone right now instead of becoming frustrated allow my peace that surpasses all understanding to rest your weary soul. Launch out into the deep. Even though you may feel like giving up, even though your past may have been painful, even though that person let you down, even though that job didn't come through, even though your finances don't look right right now, even though your body may be racked with pains, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. So launch out into the deep and put your trust into my hands. Nevertheless, Launch out into the deep. Talking about faith. Just trust him. Trust him to know what he's talking about. Trust him to lead you where he wants you to go. Trust, trust him to know what he's doing. You either going to trust him or you're not. You're even going to trust him or you're not. Nevertheless, launch out into the deep, especially when it doesn't make sense to do so, talking about faith. God is speaking to someone, I believe that right now, and he wants you to trust in him with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. You see, Simon Peter had toiled all night and caught nothing, but because Jesus had spoken to him, he was willing to let go and let God. Simon had toured all night and caught absolutely nothing. But because he put his faith in the fisherman of all fishermen, the teacher of all teachers, the healer of all healers, the lawyer of all lawyers, he was able to let go and let God. Are you willing to let go and let God? Are you able to? Are you able to launch out into the deep? Yes, you are. But are you willing to? Are you willing to launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought? 
Are you willing to renew your mind and bring into captivity all those wandering thoughts that come from the enemy? Those thoughts of deception, those thoughts of fear, those thoughts of helplessness, those thoughts of despair, those thoughts of defeat. Nevertheless, isn't that what faith is all about? Launching out into the deep, that is, moving away from your own comfort zone where it feels safe. It feels safe here so I can give up. I don't want to launch out. I'm in my comfort zone right now. But what is faith about? Isn't it believing God that your breakthrough will come, that it's just a matter of time, that it's in his own timing? And in the meantime, isn't it that you're saying, I'm going to rest, I'm going to be reassured of his promises, and I'm not going to focus on the problems? Nevertheless, Launch out and to the deep. Even when you feel like no one is listening, nevertheless, even when the world all around you appears to be shattering and the earth beneath you appears to be sinking, saying, nevertheless, even though it goes against all odds and everyone is telling you, to, why don't you just give up? Why don't you just curse your God and die? Nevertheless, even though you are going through one trial after another, even though there seems like there is simply no way out, nevertheless, Launch out into the deep. You see, the God of all gods, who knows all, who sees all, who listens, this is the same God who, according to Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, yes, he knows the plans he has for you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Will you trust him at his word, my brother? Don't put limitations on God based on what you are incapable of doing. You see, there is no comparison. Just trust him. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toured all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. So you may be saying right now, I've tossed and turned all night. I've weeped and weeped in bitter tears all night. You may be tired and weary, and you might be just about to give up. And just a little before dawn, when the morning light is about to emerge, you are about ready to give up. Just when the light at the end of the tunnel starts to come into focus, you are about to give up. I come to encourage somebody right now, don't give up. Don't you allow the enemy to rob you of your blessing. Don't you give up. Don't you dare give up. You keep your head up high. Stand still and firm on God's word. Stand still and know that I am God, says the Lord. Nevertheless, launch out into the deep. Trust God. Trust God. Let go and let God. And Simon answered, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Is he your master? Are you allowing him to be Lord over everything? If you trust him to be your master, you will be obedient to his word. And even when his word doesn't make sense to you in a particular situation that you may be going through, you will simply choose to trust him. The word of God lets us know that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He changes not. Can you trust the same God who has worked so many miracles as recorded in the scriptures? Can you trust him to work a miracle in your life today? Will you trust him? Isn't this the same miracle working God that proved himself over and over again, not just in Bible times, but in your time, in your yesterday, in your yesterday when you didn't think that you could see a way out of no way? He's the same God. He's the same God. Is there anything too hard for God? And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets break. Live in the nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. John 6, 6 says, And these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him. He said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for Jesus himself knew what he was going to do. 
Philip answered and said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, that Simon Peter's brother, said, There is a lad here, there is a boy here, who has five belly loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many people? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Just make them sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they had filled, he said unto the disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Now did it make sense to have all these men sit there and prepare to eat when there was clearly not enough food around? Does it, make sense to, does it make sense to sit at an empty table with no food in sight and give him thanks? And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. Nevertheless, launch out into the deep. Have faith in God. If he did it before, he would do it again. Even our Lord and Savior felt weary in the Garden of Gethsemane. Matthew, the 26th chapter, and the 36th verse says, Then Jesus came with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and says unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then says Jesus unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But you see, I like this, that Jesus didn't stop there. He said, Nevertheless, not as I will, but that as thou wilt be done. The 41st says, And he comes unto the disciples and finds them asleep. And he says unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The 42nd verse. Then Jesus goes away a second time, and he prays, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass from, from me except I drink it, thy will be done. 43rd verse, and Jesus came and found his disciples sleep again, for their eyes were heavy. The 44th verse, and he left them and went away and prayed the third time, saying the words. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us get going. Behold, behold, he is at hand that does betray me. The 42nd verse, going back to the 42nd verse, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Doing your darkest battles, during the toughest times, when it seems like all hope is gone, what do you cling to? Are you able to say, to truly say, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done? Do you truly trust and depend on Jesus to see you through the tough times in life? Or are you so focused on asking him, on begging him to take this cup from you? Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. You see, God is a mighty God. Do you believe that? If you do, then rest in the nevertheless. God is a promise keeper. Do you believe that? Then rest in the spirit of nevertheless. God is a faithful God. Do you believe that? Then rest in the spirit of nevertheless. God is a God of second chances. Do you believe that? Then rest in the spirit of nevertheless. Rest in the spirit of nevertheless and launch out into the deep. God is an all-knowing, 
all-powerful and trusted master. Do you believe that? The rest in the spirit of nevertheless. Stand firm, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand fast, nevertheless, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Stand firm, nevertheless, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Stand still, nevertheless, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Don't you know he's more than a conqueror? Don't you know he's more than enough? Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Going back to Simon. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught so many fish, so many fish, so many of the fish that they couldn't even carry them all. So, I want to encourage you, my friend. Don't faint. Don't despair. Don't stay weary. Yeah, you're going to get weary sometime, but don't stay there. Don't stay in that state of weariness. Just launch out into the deep. Believe God. Trust him. Just remember, nevertheless, you see, sometimes, oftentimes, you need to encourage yourself. We need to encourage ourselves. Psalms 42, 11 says, Why art thou cast down on my soul? You're going to have to say that to yourself sometime. And why art thou disquieted within me? Why am I so up and about? Why am I so discouraged? Why am I so fretful? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my continence and my God. I dare you right now. I dare you, whatever you may be going through, whatever you may be experiencing in life, maybe it happened today, maybe it happened last year and you're still struggling, maybe it happened a while back, or you're thinking about things that may happen tomorrow when God told you don't even worry about tomorrow, but I dare you to start praising him right now. I dare you to praise him in spite of everything that you may be going through. Praise him for you still have joy. I'm talking about that joy deep down on the inside. Praise him right now in spite of the overwhelming circumstances. You can stay focused on the one who knows all, sees all, and cares for all. So praise him right now. Colossians 1, 5 says, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before, and the word of the truth of the gospel. Praise him for the hope that lies within you. Hope that you know what you know that you know. Praise him for now. Praise him because he is God. Praise him because he is wonderful. Praise him because he's sovereign. Praise him because of just because of who he is. Praise him and be thankful for all the many blessings he's bestowed upon you. Praise him. You might not be walking the way you want to walk, but praise him because you can walk. You may not be thinking the way you should be thinking, but praise him because you can ask him to renew your mind. Praise him. Create an atmosphere of praise. Don't you know when you create an atmosphere of praise, you confuse the enemy? Let me say that again as I close. Don't you know when you create an atmosphere of, pra of praising him, the enemy is like, well, I thought I had her down. I thought that was it. But wait, 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 hold on. She's up here praising God. I know what it looks like, but she's praising God. Matthew 6, 9 says, After this manner, therefore pray you, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Praise him. Praise his name. Trust him. Believe him. Psalms 9th chapter, first and the second verse says, I will praise ye, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praises to thy name, O thou most high. These scriptures don't say praise him when everything's going well and don't praise him when things are going badly. It doesn't say there's a, that, that there's a special time you need to praise him. The word of God says praise him all the time. Psalms 22 and 3 says, The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. So if the Lord inhabits the praises of his people, what should you be doing? What should you be doing? Psalms 34 and 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. All times. No, no, maybe I shouldn't praise him right now because my body is racked with pain and I just don't feel like it. Well, the scripture doesn't tell us to go by our feelings. It says, Bless the Lord at all times. Let his praise be continued in your mouth. 
all times. Surely he didn't mean when I look at my pocketbook and there is no money to pay my bills. Surely he didn't mean when I go to the doctor and receive that bad report. Surely he didn't mean when I get that bad, that phone call from my child and my child was out there and then I don't know where they are now. And he's telling me, Mom, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm about to end it. The Word of God says, Praise Him at all times. His praise shall continually be in thy mouth. Be in thy mouth. Psalms 63, the first verse says, first verse says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Praise him, my friend. Praise him. Trust him and praise him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 113 says, these scriptures, you need to meditate on them. These scriptures, the word of God lets us know that, that we should hide his word in our hearts so that we don't sin against him. We need to praise him at all times, at all times. Now, you may be listening to me, and you may be saying, Sister, you sound so crazy. How in the world am I going to praise him when all around me is seeking sand? Well, let me tell you something. You can't do these things alone. You cannot praise him alone. You need a Savior to help you. You need a Savior to guide you. So if you have not accepted him as your Savior, you need to do that right now. And if you're listening to my voice, it's not too late. If you are hearing this message, it's not too late. You can have rest. You can have restoration. You can have that reassurance right now. For he stands ready with his arms open to welcome you home. So if you're not saved, if you're not repentant of your sins and accepted Jesus into your heart, if you are not 100% sure that you will spend eternity in heaven, listen very closely. Nobody can save you but God. Trust Jesus today. You see, there's only one way to God, and that's through his Son, Jesus Christ. John fourteen six, Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 4 and 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So I ask you, my friend, are you saved? Are you born again? Have you made the confession that Jesus Christ is Lord? I want you to think about that. You see, you're not really going to be able to launch out into the deep. And you won't really be able to know what nevertheless at thy will, let thy will be done. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, and then allow him to become Lord over your life. Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So the first thing you need to do if you're not saved, according to Romans 3.10, you need to admit that you are a sinner. For Romans 3.10 says, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. The second thing you need to do is be willing to turn from your sin. That means you need to be willing to repent. You need to be, third thing you need to do is believe that Jesus Christ died for you. You need to believe that he was buried and that he rose from the dead. Romans 10.10 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then the fourth thing you need to do is through prayer, invite Jesus into your life to become your personal Savior. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to do that? For Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you want to call upon him right now? See, you can say, pray this prayer wherever you are right now. If you're sincere within your heart and you want to ask him to come into your heart to forgive you, then repeat after me. Dear God, I am a sinner and I need forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ shed his precious blood and died for my sins. I am willing to turn from sin. I now invite Christ to come into my life and my heart as my personal Savior. 
Amen. If you just trusted Jesus as your personal Savior, hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise you can give to God. And the word of God lets us know that angels are rejoicing because a soul has come to Christ. Amen. If you just trusted Jesus as your personal Savior, don't be shy. Share the good news with somebody else. Share the good news. You have just begun a wonderful new life in him. Now, get a good Bible, a good study Bible. Read your Bible every day to get to know Jesus better. Talk to God in prayer. And then don't be selfish. Share this good news with somebody else. Somebody else. And then you can truly let go and let God. Then you can truly launch out into the deep. Then you can truly know that the best is still yet to come. Then you can truly Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and let him direct your path. Amen. Let us pray. We're thankful. We're so thankful, Father. We're so thankful that soul that's crying out to you. We're so thankful, Lord God, that that soul that just got saved. We're so thankful that we know the angels in heaven are rejoicing right now. We're so thankful, Lord God, for all the many blessings that you've restored, Lord God, for this word that has gone forth, and we know, Lord God, according to your word, that it not will be not it will not return unto us void. So we're thankful, Lord God, that this is a message you have given, a message of hope, a message of rest, a message of reassurance, and a message of restoration. And it's all because of you. We give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we give you the praise because you and you alone are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, we are so thankful. Amen, amen, and amen. Go with God and know that the best is truly, truly yet to come. Amen. Wow, what an awesome word. Launch out into the deep. Amen. Thank you, Minister Ben, for that awesome word. Amen. That was an awesome word. We pray that you'll be able to share this broadcast on His Abound of Grace. Amen. Uh, with throughout the throughout the day, share with your friends. Amen. Um, give us, send us a word. Let us know what you're thinking. You can do that by get by contacting us at when speak when Christmas speak at gmail dot com. We'd love to hear from you. We also can reach us at our social media sites on Facebook. And um, some, and Twitter and a couple others when, under when Christian speak. Also, if you go to our website from christianspeak dot com, you can find a little bit more information about us. If you have a desire to sow a seed or donation, uh, love offering, whatever you do, and whatever you bring is fine. You can do so by going to WhenChristmasSpeak dot com and clicking on the donate now button. Amen. We are a five hundred one c three company. Amen. You, and you can use it as a part of your tax, taxes for next year. Amen. So we pray that you have a blessed rest of the afternoon. Don't forget, amen, uh, tomorrow, amen, uh, you'll be listening to uh, Pastor Paul Morgan will be on with Challenge to Change, Challenge to Change at, at 7 p.m. And also Reverend Gwen Dixon will be on at 1 o'clock for the uh, uh, Midday Glory Prayer. Amen. So be blessed. Know that I love you. God loves you. And you can't do a thing about it. God bless you. 